microphone check one two what is this you're now listening to a brand new episode of the play big faster podcast look what you done started talk to him. attorney high performance coach and speaker sheree prince asks hard questions to really get to the bottom of what makes entrepreneurs tick from starting a business marketing strategies and the ins and outs of their industries we talk everything from book recommendations lifestyle hacks and everything possible to get you inspired and motivated to build your own business the play big faster podcast starts now let's go Welcome to another episode of the Play Big Faster podcast. We are joined today by Rick Williams. Rick is the author of the book, Control Everything, Own Nothing. He's also the creator of the Financial IQ Challenge. Today, he's here to share some basic wealth principles with us. Let's get started. Your dogs act like they they act like they hurt, you know. So, so what happened is that the other day, um, uh, it was in a house and when it came out, she decided she was gonna walk, she was gonna walk them. And they hadn't even messed. It was in a house all day and hadn't even messed and they'd been in the house all day. So she took them out and she walked them. And because they're so tame and they're so grateful and they got such a good attitude, they wait until they get walked in order to be able to relieve themselves. So when you take a person and you teach them something over a period of time, you just letting them know that you can't mess in my house. That's all. You know, if you're gonna mess, you gotta mess outside. So I need to teach you. And that means that you need to be you need to be trained. I'm just like them puppies. I'm just like Lona and Lady. Teach me something, Cherie. I ain't gonna mess in your house. I promise you, I'll follow you outside. I stay out there all the time until you tell me it's time to go back in. You can put a collar on me or none. A diamond collar, preferably, was a good one. If you just if you just gotta put a collar on me, but I go anywhere you want to take me. You know why? Because I know you're the bomb, Cherie. I know you're worth following. I know that's why I'm talking to you for an hour because you got it going on to the breaking down. You ain't no joke. So. People need to find. They need to. They need to get. They need to be part of your spirit, your dynamism. You know, you're a dynamic person, and you're you're a good influence on a human being. So they need to be around you just to, just to learn from observation how you behave. You know, and um, and then they can they can gain you know some some utility from that. So that's my impression of people. I only accept people into my quarters who have the same attitude I got. I'm like a little puppy that can be walked. You can tell me what to do. You can instruct me. You know, and I'm not going to kick and buck and scratch. And I'm definitely gonna, not going to use the washroom in your crib because I, I'm not going to bring let you bring no mess up in my house. So I ain't going to mess up your house, if that makes sense. So that's why we do a five day challenge and you know, we walk people through the process and how to operate like a one. So the five day challenge, is it an all day challenge or how, how long are you with these people for five days? No, it's just two hours a day, two hours a day. If you if you want to ask questions, because we have a, what's called a VIP section. In the VIP section are people who can ask questions, and uh, and then and they can also listen to questions because quite often when it comes down to trust and how we get back, you know, ten times from the IRS what it is that we spend, and uh, then the IRS takes their little cut out. That's some that's some news that you know ninety nine percent of the people haven't heard. They come to so when they come to a uh, setting, and my students and who are already living like this who have already. You know, they gave out a $10 million check, a $6 million check, a million and a half dollar check. And I have several students inside of my, in my challenge who come every week, who come, every, come once a month, I should say. And even though they already are learning what's going on, they come every once a month because this is their heritage, you know, and they want to learn more. And we have something new for them every single month. So VIPs, they, and they, stay, from, um, they stay for two hours. And then people who are part of Facebook, they stay for an hour. So it's a two hour duration. Every single, um, every day for those five months. Now you mentioned that you have students, so there's another way to interact with you outside of your five day challenge. No, if a person wants to become a student, they have to come through the challenge to become a student. So that's how students are derived. That's how they created. Because again, we don't even know when you meet me, Cherie. We don't live like the average person. Okay, we live like the Trumps. We live like the Duponts. We live like the Kennedys. We live like you know, the House of Representatives in, in the in if you just search the House of Representatives uh, and the Congress, most of them are attorneys. And they and and ninety nine point nine percent of them live out of trust. You know, they, the trust is the way of the one percentile. We live out of trust. Okay, that means ninety nine percent of the world is not. So that means that when you come into a meeting, you don't know what's going on. 
All right. You know, you got three types of people. You got one person that they don't know what's happening. You got somebody else that kind of that uh, watch things happen. You got somebody else that make things happen. But it, but most of the people when it come down to trust don't know what's happening. And that's OK, because that's my job to make sure that you know that. But uh, so but there's no need for you to have an appointment with me. Why would I have an appointment with you and waste 40 minutes talking to you an hour talking to you? After that hour, you still gonna be pretty much don't know what I'm talking about. So that's why that's why everybody comes through the challenge. I don't care. I meet billionaires and they're like, hey, Rick, you know, Rick, let's just get with it, Rick. OK, let's get to a point with you. I say part, the point is I see you at the challenge. That's the point. All right. Because to me, I have an eight year old grandson. I have eight grandchildren, but I have one that I spend a lot of time with. All right. I have five daughters. I have two sons. All right. And those are the people. That's my kingdom. So you're not going to be, I'm not, I'm not going to let people change my kingdom. I don't care how much money you have. I'm not taking those bribes. So we're not going to have all these frivolous conversations around these conversations, all these meetings, like somebody's more important than them because they aren't. Anybody you know more important than you than your children? Let the church say, let the church say amen. Amen. So that's my point. So that's how everybody does it if they want to do it at all. So step one, we go through your challenge. Step two, at the end of the challenge, we've been courting for about five days now. What's our next step, Rick? So at the end of, at the, end of the challenge, you are, we make an offer that explains to you how you can get involved with us in terms of being able to live like we live and uh, live out of trust. And also, if you are interested in representing us, uh, to be a trust agent as well. So you have two different choices and um, or, or three choices because you might want to be in our inner circle as well. So we have an inner circle. We meet four times a year around the country and uh, we do a lot of real estate deals together and we do um, a lot of investing together and they get first dabs at, at the companies that we create. You know, like we have a brand new company that we just created um, that's selling a global product clear across the world for golfers and things of that nature. So we get people an opportunity to make money with us um, just by association. So those are the, those are the ways you get in touch. That's how you move forward after coming through a challenge. So it sounds like Rick, the wealth coach, was not born, but he was made. What was the pivot for you that you realized that this was the way to wealth? Well, in 2016, when I got fired from that warehouse, I went out and did the real estate deal. And I made more money off of that deal than they would have paid me all for the whole year. So then I started doing all these real estate deals. And, um, and I learned how to do real estate with no money down. And I still know. And I still pe teach people how to do it. So, did you say no money down, right? Yeah, the first deal I ever did, uh, uh, this young man came by my house. He saw the stage play because I write stage plays. So this young man came by he, who had just came from my stage play. And he said, Rick, man, you ought to be rich. The way you got all those actors out there, all that fun y'all having, all that singing. All, he's like, you did all, you trained them all, you wrote all of that? And I said, yeah. He said, you should be rich, brother. I said, hallelujah. So what you got in me? What you got in mind, my brother? He said, man, I can show you how to do a real estate deal with no money. I said, good, because I ain't got no more. I said, that's a perfect deal for me. A no money deal. That's right in my alley, brother. You on my block. I said, they gave me a couple of sheets of paper. And I went and I went and found a house and I put a contract on it. And then some people came over. I bought it for 20000 I sold it to them for 33000 in two weeks. Made $13,000. So that was better than warehouse money. And uh, then I was one day, I was taking a family out to eat. And... Uh, because I believe in taking family grocery shopping and stuff like that, you know, unusual stuff to most people. To me, it's just normal. It's what Jesus did to do. So I was taking his family to go eat. And the guy was sitting in front of the um, the save life place. And, um, and I said, how you doing, brother? He said, I'm doing good. He said, I got cologne for sale. I said, what you got? He said, I got some Gucci. I said, right on, man. I said, how much? He said, $5. I said, mm. I said give me some of that fake Gucci. <laughs> I say fake Gucci, but you know, <laughs> I said, I said, I take some $20. It's not like a deal. That's one. Of the so I gave my card. I said, if you know anybody that's selling some property, let me know. So he looked at me like he was mad. Sure. I was like, you know, is there a problem, bro? He's like, yeah, you need to buy my property. I'm like, what, what are you talking about? He said, I got a church for sale. I said, really? He said, yeah, my father left it to me. I said, give me the address. So I went by and looked at it the next day. I came by and wrote him a contract for it. So I bought this church from him and sold it to the next door neighbor next to the church. He was doing all the big uh, uh, trucking kind of business. He wanted to know, man, who owned this church over here? Trying to, I've been trying to get this place for I don't know how many years. And uh, I said, I do. He said, oh, man. And he worked out a deal with me. He bought it. 
And they offer me from the guy. I never spent a penny. All I did was bought the guy's church for his change. So that's what I do. So I teach people how to do that. Anything, anywhere from a house to a hotel. Same concept. And the, the biggest deal we worked on is the World Trade Center. And uh, yeah, so the World Trade Center. And I got a young student named Wes Young. And he found, uh, he, and so we found a buyer for the World Trade Center. And uh, we, and a group of uh, Asians that wanted to buy from us. And it was being sold for $21 billion, by the way. 21 billion. 21 billion, yes. It was being sold for 21 billion by Larry, Larry, Larry Bill, and the owner of the Utah Jazz. He was selling it because he owned it. And uh, so we got to the day, the morning that the guys wanted to talk, somebody else put a contract. So we it was, it was, we went back and forth, I don't know, maybe two months. So finally, somebody blew it before the person, the people that we were trying to buy, we were trying to sell it to. What I'm saying is that it doesn't matter. Money because the concepts the same. You just get something under contract, get control of, it, and then sell it to the person that wants it. And that's you know it's a simple concept in real estate. But what we have well versed in is we have well versed in negotiating in terms of like how to talk to people. In fact, people that come to my class, I teach them how to make millions of dollars listening by hardly talking at all. Well, people that talk a lot don't make a lot of money. The Bible says, "A fool is known by his multitude of words." So I open up your mouth and move on up. Wise person don't talk. We listen, we listen intently, and you can solve people's problems. So outside of talking to you, being interviewing and teaching people, I don't talk much. I don't talk much. I just listen to people. We help them. So uh, since you asked that question, since that's the first spark a little interest in the real estate deal. So uh, but that's how that's part of what we train in, in the challenge as well. So you mentioned that with your background in real estate, uh, you also have a real estate company, Stellar Homes. Correct. Yes. Tell us about Stellar Homes. Well, do I have to tell it? Can I sing it? Stellar is a stellar time. <laughs> I, love it. I love it. I love it. So that's our motto. But um, that's the that's the that's the real estate company that I am. That I buy and sell the houses out of. What's really funny is that first deal that I did. The guy was uh, he was walking around looking at the walls. He said, "Rick, the most I can give you for this place is thirty two thousand five hundred." So I was like. Um, so I said, I had no money, Sheree. I was broke because the guy just came. He just came to my house two weeks ago telling me what to do, right? But uh, I know how I'm a man of dignity. I, I I ain't never given my dignity up. I knew I could sell that place for what I wanted. So even though I didn't have no money, even though it was tempting when he started talking about a price lower than what I wanted, I said, I walked him to the door. I said, have a great day, Ed. His name is Ed. He's a nice guy. I said, have a great day, Ed, Mr. Ed. Yeah, he wasn't Mr. Ed, like a horse is a horse, of course, of course, but nobody talks to a horse, of course, unless, of course, the name of the horse is the famous Mr. Ed. He wasn't that famous, Mr. Ed. All right. <laughs> so, but, uh, but I was treating like a horse. I was like, mm, you can come up out of here. You can ride you. You can ride up out of here like Mr. Ed. So, 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 when he got to the door, he saw I was serious. Like, how about 34th now, man? I said, I'll tell you what, Ed. I said, if you just got to squeeze 500 out of me, I'll take 34 five. He said, deal. And I said, you know what, Ed? I'll tell you what. I said, I, I got to, I'm, I'm going to make the pot even sweeter for you. He said, what's that, Rick? I said, I'm going to take $1,500 off. He said, really? I said, 33000 Ed. I said, I'll tell you what, just write me a check for $3,000 now. He's like, I don't have my checkbook, Rick. I said, we have it when I get out of church. He said, I sure will. So he met me in the parking lot and wrote me a check for $3,000 down because I didn't have no money in my account. I think I had Stella Holmes with a zero balance, you know, and now we've done deals, you know, clear across the country and, uh, you know, ever since then. So size not small beginnings, you know, and, uh, and whatever it is that you guys are going through, whatever, whatever, everybody that's listening, no matter where you are currently, that's not what's, that's not what's important. What's important is what kind of mindset do you have? You know, and what and what are you focused on? This is the beautiful thing about life, Sheree. We get a hundred percent of what we focus on. Isn't that beautiful? So, that, so that, you know, we got to do this um, hone in and focus. I mean, that's such good. It's so simple until it just it just go, can go right past our head. We have we are the totality of our of our focus. So let's all just just be encouraged to focus on what it is that uh. It's going to give us the best results. And then, uh, you know, and go hard at it. 
So you told us a little bit about who you are and what you do, but for someone who's on the fence or they're not exactly sure how to find a way to well, what resources do you recommend for them that they can start with today that will kind of get them to where they need to be until they're able to actually work with you or someone like you? Oh, well, they can, they can start working with us right away because they can come through the challenge. The challenge ain't nothing but $97, $297. I made sure that I made something. They can, everybody can buy a book. This book ain't nothing but $47. Now, where can we find the book at and how can we get to the challenge? Okay. So the book is at um, www.controlebook.com. And all of this is in my link tree on Instagram. The easiest way to contact me is to send me a direct message on Instagram. I answer all of them. It's the easiest way to contact me. And, and the book is on our financial IQ challenge is financial IQ challenge.com. So all, all of that is in my link tree on Instagram. That's the easiest way to find me. And, um, and, that's how we can start a relationship. Now, even though that's the easiest way, you also have a YouTube channel, don't you? That's correct. That's correct. It's a lot of free. Tra- Excuse me. It's a lot of free training there too. And, um, and so that's another way. Educating yourself is the key. Educating yourself, hearing, and getting around people, have some doggone energy and belief. Those two things. Educate yourself because we are independent. Place. And then we are interdependent afterwards. You know? So you bring some punch to the party. It's just like when you get ready to meet that man of your dream, that woman of your dream. You know what I'm saying? Don't you remember you told me you love me, baby? You meet her, right? Meet me at the altar and alone. You see, when you start singing those songs to somebody, they better already be complete. You don't start singing that song like, I'm going to help you out. I'm going to help complete you. That's a lie from the pit of hell. You ain't going to help complete nobody. What you do is you talk to people who are, are not, I ain't say perfect, but I'm talking about people who already put their work in on themselves. And so when you meet one another, it's one complete person, building another complete person. Now you got a great relationship. And now you can, it's not a flawless relationship, but it's a relationship where I'm not trying to complete you. You're not trying to complete me. You were complete before I met you. You were complete before you met me. That's the same thing in business. You don't, vote, you don't meet a person and try to help change their attitude. You meet a person that already has a attitude and you just lead them into what they do with their good attitude. It's just like hiring people. You hire people, teach them how to get a good attitude. You hire people that's got a good attitude and you just teach them your culture. Are you picking up what I'm putting down? I am picking up what you are putting down. <laughs> And so once a week, and I think you said once a month, that people are able to interact with you on that level. Is that correct? Correct. Once a month is for a whole week and once a month, yes. Okay. Well, that is awesome. So the Rick that we see today, what would you tell the 20-something-year-old Rick that will kind of give that person quantum leaps to kind of get to where they're going a little bit faster? Because that's what we do at the Play Big Faster podcast. We help people get quantum leaps by bringing on people just like you to kind of fast track their success. Yes, I would have studied the richest people and did what they did first. I would have stopped, I would have stopped doing mediocre stuff. You know, because people say, I want to do as my passion. I'm like, well, does that make any money? You're like, well, you know, if I, if I can't do my passion, I say, hey, 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 does that make any money? What you're doing for a living to make money off of can make you enough money to do what you, what you want to do for a passion. You know, it might, what you do for a passion might not, it might have you in a soup line. It might not be something that can leave a heritage to your children. children. Our first obligation is not our passion. Our first obligation is Proverbs 13 and 22. The wealth of the sinner of the wicked is laid up for the just, and a good man leaves a heritage to their children's children. That's our first obligation to make so to make sure that when we leave up out of here, the grandkids are already rich. So how are they going to be rich if you're doing stuff that don't make money? Talking about that's my passion. That's arrogant. That's not biblical. That's humble. That's arrogant. That's fake humility. That's out of order with God. God is the one who tells us what to do, not us. We don't do it. We, we don't do as convenient. We do it just make what God tells us to do. Go ahead. It looked like it's burning on your lips. What's that question? That you're, you're so let's, let's circle back. You said something about leaving, leaving a legacy. How does that tie into the trust that you are teaching people about um, on your challenge? Okay. Well, what's important is that the way most people are set up, Cherie, is they set up like James Brown. They set up like Aretha Franklin. Now, James, I, I just got to tell you. I just got to give it to you. I just got to tell the truth. 
Now here's James Brown talking about, I got soul and I'm super bad. Big payback. Well, he's been paying back the last 17 years. It took 17 years for the state to be settled in pro. You know, he died what, 17 years ago. So, so it took all that time for his account to be, his, his pro, for his estate to be settled in probate court. The king of soul. I'm talking about traveling around the whole world, hundreds of millions of dollars that he created, and dies a pauper. Dies a pauper, and leave nothing to the kids' kids. The I, the I, and the S, probate court, and everybody just rapes and pillages and robs his own estate. So um, Solomon said this in Ecclesiastes 6 1. He said, There's an evil under the sun that I've seen, and it's common among men. The God to give a man wealth, honor, and um and money and they leave it to a stranger, you know, to a stranger. Let a stranger. The IRS is a stranger. All right, they're stranger. They're stranger. They, they're not a good stranger too. They ain't like they ain't like Eddie Kendrick. He said, "Oh baby, love is shameless. Long times have meant it changes, and you and I the best of strangers now." IRS ain't no best of strength. IRS is a, is a company, a third party collection agency hired by the United States, which is another company, another corporation. Their headquarters in the Philippines and Puerto Rico, their headquarters ain't even here. It's an international company. All right, with a Dun and Bradstreet report just like ours and the EIN, just like yours, if you have a if you have your own LLC. They're a company. They're just in business for profit, just like anybody else is. And people look at them like, like um, they have an adversarial relationship with them and they're afraid of them because they're afraid of them. And they're going to learn what it is to take to protect their own thing. Because when you're afraid, you just make bad decisions. You know, an average person, when you say I, our is, that's like the fear of God that folk. I'm like, why aren't you afraid of God like you're afraid of the IRS? That don't make no sense. You're afraid of some mortals and you're afraid of the immortal. You know, you're more afraid of the creature than you are of creation. I mean, the, um, the creature than a creator it won't make any sense. See, when you slow down, that's why I slow people down. And then when you learn the laws, you come to find out the IRS work for us. You know, they're supposed to be working for you. So the way that our trust is set up, the person, when we pass away, our money goes directly. In my case, my daughter, Ebony, who works with me, all my money goes there and into the grandkids and into the other kids. When well, one penny goes to the IRS, not one red wooden nickel. Nope, definitely not going to prove that. Clear. So, what do you tell people who say, "Well, I have a will, I don't need to trust"? Do you have any advice for those folks? Yes, I let them know that your will will definitely lead you to probate court. A will, a will ain't nothing but a glorified pimp. All it do is going to lead you in a glory in a, in a probate court. And you're going to be sitting right there. Your, your family will because you'll be out of here. If your family be sitting, your stuff is public knowledge when you have a will. They, your stuff is in the newspaper in the obituary section. All right. You know, so leaving a will is like, leaving a will is like, please bury me butt naked. That's what leaving a will is like. Okay. You are exposed. All right. Extremely exposed. And everybody, and so the probate course has to keep your stuff. I was just telling everybody in class today how a guy left his family um, a, a building that we bought because we know who's in probate because it's public knowledge. We got software that tells us. These, here's, another, here's another personal representative, the person who represents you in court. It's called a personal representative, the person who you left in your will, the person who you designated in your will. They call it a personal representative. They don't the want to come to court. And then a judge decides through them what should happen. If it's a supervised case, then that means that the judge is the one who decides everything because they supervise on the situation. If it's unsupervised, then the judge leaves it up to the leniency of the personal representative. But you still got to pay the judge. You don't make the judge no never mind whether it's supervised or not. You still got to pay them. And look up judge, look at their salaries for probate judge. They, they, they get paid good. And a probate attorney is going to get paid well. And then the IRS is going to tax the best out of the state. So it's a, it, a will is a, it's a joke. You know, you have to operate out of trust. Rich folks don't operate with wills, they operate by trust. Now, you know, the next argument that I'm thinking of is that, you know, trusts are too expensive to establish and a will is a lot easier and a lot more inexpensive to get. Do you have anything to share with our subscribers about how you can get a trust, um, how it actually saves you money in the long term? Sure. You get what you pay for. Next question. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's 
what I love about you. You are one of the most direct people I have ever met. And your voice, silky smooth. Silky smooth. <laughs> I love you back. I love you back. I love you back. To elaborate a little bit more, though, um, you can get a living trust. You don't have to get a, a trust because our trust costs money because we have, our trust pay tax credits. So um, if you mess, if you get a trust through us, man, it pays you back 10 times, you know, um, whatever it is you spend it every year. So it's really irrelevant how much it costs. You know, what it really costs you is all the money that you ain't going to get back. You know, it's like a person talking about, I don't want to, I don't want to eat a donut because it's got a hole in the middle of it. You know, so let me give you an example of what I mean. If, if, if you gave me a dollar and I gave you back $10, would you be happy, Sheree? Aesthetic. And if you gave me 10 bucks and I gave you back 100, would you be happier? More than I can tell you, yes. And if you gave me 100 and I gave you back 1,000, would you be even happier? I would be even happier. All right. And if you gave me 1,000 and I gave you back 10,000, are we cooking with grease? We are cooking with fish grease in the middle of July. Fish grease in the middle of July. You better, you better preach, woman. And if I gave you and if, you, and if you gave me 10000 I gave you back 100000 can we do the cabbage patch together? We can do the cabbage patch, the Tootsie Roll, the shoulder lean. Oh. I mean, tell me where you want to go with this. The bank head mouse too? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then finally, if uh, if you gave me 100000 I gave you back a million dollars, could I at least, could I at least be um, seeing at one of your next ceremonies? Several of my upcoming ceremonies, yes. Yes, yes. So all things being equal, if um, if money's not an object, then which one of those deals make the most sense to you? If you got the money, which one make the most sense to you? I mean, I'm going to go with the latter. I want that million dollars, yes. Yeah. So we, so what we do is we help people who's going to spend your money anyway. You're going to spend it anyway. So we help people who's going to spend their money anyway. We show them how to spend it. And we show them how to stop spending the money and start circulating it. See, spending money means it doesn't come back. It's a surefire recipe for disaster. It's basically the plight of the black community. The black community was in much better shape in the 60s and the 70s than it is in 2022. 2022, the black community is a ghost town because we don't own anything anymore. We used to own all our businesses before integration. Before integration, we own all our businesses because all the lawyers, all the doctors, everybody live in the same neighborhood. All right? And the kids got to see excellence in the community. Why? Because the person that lived next door to them on the store down the street, the person lived next door to him was a plastic surgeon, you know? So they got to see every every walk of life. They got to see life. It's almost like it never happened, you know? It's like we're walking around like now, like that was heaven and we in some type of abyss or something right now. We're like, what's going on now? Because you don't see that. You don't even know your neighbors, let alone I mean, you know what they do, you know? We don't have that kind of camaraderie anymore. We don't, we don't have a community anymore the way that we ought to. And, and the number one reason why we don't, why we don't is because of, Integration. Once we once we left out of our neighborhoods and stuff, the money left. All right, and money can't be spent. Money has to be circulated. You try you try every other community except the black community. Their money circulates about two two weeks before it leaves. In the black community, our money lasts about six seconds. So, and let's back up for a moment because you um you talked about tax credits, but everyone who's listening may not may not know what tax credits are. Could you give us just, you know, real briefly, tell us what tax credits are and how they interact with the trust to achieve the goals that you do with your program? Sure. So a tax credit is, uh, you know, if you watch the, the argument between Biden and Donald Trump in 2020 and when Trump was trying to run for president again. So the commentator, he says, hey, he says, they said, we're looking at your tax return here, and it says that you only paid $750 in taxes in 2016. So Trump started talking with that funny voice of his. I, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I, 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 what really happened was, was I, I paid millions in taxes. I paid millions. I paid millions in taxes. I, oh, he said, I, I. Then, he got, then he got ghastly serious. He said, I'm from the private sector. Change that little voice, right? He turned from Michael Jackson and then Barry White. I'm from the private sector. <laughs> I was like, is that Trump still talking? He said, yeah, I'm from the private sector. He said, I don't want to pay taxes. The president of the United States, y'all need to, they need to watch it. They need to watch it, Sheree. Hey, you have a commercial about this, don't you? Yes, I do. Yes, okay, y'all, please go find his, his YouTube commercial about this, but please continue. So the president of the United States said, I, I, don't, I don't want to pay taxes. He said, I'm from the private sector, you know, and, uh, and none of us want to pay taxes unless you're stupid. Unless you're stupid. He used the word stupid. But you know how Trump talks. 
He tell you how he tell you how you really feel. All right. He say unless you s to the p to the u to the p to the i to the d, unless you stupid. He said I get tax credits. Yeah, he he didn't he didn't put anybody his tongue at all. You can look at his tongue. You can look at his tongue. It didn't have no holes in it. Anybody his tongue. All right. He said y'all. He said y'all stupid running around and paying taxes. He told the merit the whole world y'all stupid. You know what's really funny though, Sheree? After he got through saying that, well, what's not funny, but what's interesting is that only four thousand views. You get more views of a, uh, uh, of a of a video from a kid making slime. You know, not four thousand, four hundred thousand views of his of this video. Most important, the most important video in the world on how money operates. It ain't another video in the world more important than that video. That's the most important video in the world on how the elite operate. And he told us he left the cat out the bag. You know, conversation. He wouldn't have had that conversation under no other circumstances. And but he can't hold he can't hold water. He can't hold his peace. You put a little pressure on him. You know, you know he the biggest pimp in the world. So he ain't having that. He like what? You know, you know, you gonna talk about my pimping skin? All right. Okay, you question my pimping skin? He said, I don't, you gotta be stupid to pay some dog on taxes from out here. He said, we just bought a building. Then he told the whole story. He said, we just bought a building. like that like that in the hotel I bought. I paid one hundred and twenty million. We got back eight hundred eighty-five thousand in taxes. He didn't say a whole amount of money, but I'd already looked that up. People already knew what he was talking about, right? Because I'm not gonna let you pour a pee on my head and tell me it's right. I'm focused on real money and the people who make the real money. And you know, so Trump is the cat that make the real money. So I do what he does. I'm, I'm, you ain't gotta like nobody to do what they do. Whether you like Trump or not, that's your business. But I'm talking about uh, the way this money is made. It's, like, it's the American way. Trump talking. Trump taught us what American is. That's what Trump said. And so part of what you do is you help people live like the Trumps and legally get the tax credits they deserve and that are owed to them. And I've actually had a chance to sit in on some of your um, challenge this week. And it is amazing some of the different principles um, that you share with us. And one thing that you talked about was the difference between tactics and strategy. If you could just kind of share with our subscribers on how you you know, make the difference between those and the difference it makes when you're looking to become a wealthy individual. Sure. Well, the idea is that don't go through life aimlessly. See, the problem with most people, Sheree, is not that they aim high and miss, it's that they aim low and hit. You know, most people are average because they aim to be average. Most people settle because that's their goal. That's their objective. That's their end game. It's not just want to be a settler. Think about it. You hear a person say, how, how how tall do you want your children to grow? You say, I want them to grow as tall as they can. You say, how fast you want them to run? You say, as fast as I can possibly run. You say, how strong do you want them to be? I want to be able to break some wood. Yeah, yeah. Then you say, then you say uh, how much money do you want to have there? Oh, I don't know if I could just have enough, praise the Lord. You know, two or three little wood nickels, praise God. My hands ain't got to meet. If they can believe at each other, I'd be happy. It don't even make sense. It don't even add up. It's because of the corrupt teaching, the teaching that we get, especially like in the Christian community and stuff too. It's corrupt teaching. You know, it makes a person almost feel like you some kind of devil to have some money. I'm like most of the devils I know are broke. I don't know what you're talking about. Like you get that devil, you get some money to make you the devil. I'm like most of the devilish people I know are broke. Matter of fact, Nobody ever stuck me up. The first time I got stuck up, Sheree, I'm from the South Side. Of Chicago. Don't get it twisted. I'm from the hood of Chicago. First time I got stuck up, I was four. You know? Four, four, baby, four, four, four. On my way to the on my way to the grocery store to get some wholesome bread. All right, I'm sixty. Ain't no ain't no shame in my game. Ain't no shame in my game. Okay, wholesome only costs thirty two cents. <laughs> <laughs> Inflation is a mother. <laughs> <laughs> what it costs now? Four bucks for a loaf of bread. Right. Thirty-two cent back in the day. So uh, I saw these two guys coming, and they pried my fingers back. What you got in your hand? I ain't got nothing in my hand. I ain't got nothing in my hand. They said, "Yes, you do, punk. Yes, you do." No, I ain't. They said, "Yes, you do, punk. Yes, you do." They say, I ain't got nothing. Thank you, Lord. Back up off me. Back up off me. It's like, pried <laughs> my fingers a little. I've been getting stuck up since I was four years old. It was by everybody ever got stuck up by was broke. I ain't never got stuck up by no rich dudes. All right, so people run around acting like it's some 
like it's something holy about being broke. I'm like, no, it's something dangerous about being around broke folks. All right. I know I, I got personal experience. All right. And so so this idea of, of of just having enough is an idea that makes you extremely naive, extremely settling, and extremely ultimately just willingly ignorant. Because it's like this is another life that I never had. You know, ain't no need to be, you know, tripping, you know. Like some people have meant to have all this stuff. And you and me, I'm just glad to have what I got. So we get, you know, and we're supposed to be content with the Bible says now that's what contentment is great game. We're not supposed to complain. We're not supposed to be mediocrity. Well, Rick, let's let's break that down a little bit because I mean we've used some terms here. We talked about tax credits, wills, trust, and the law. But to do what you're talking about doing with utilizing trust in this way, you don't have to have a certain level of education or income. Anybody can do this, right? Absolutely, positively. Anybody who, as you alluded to earlier, has a strategic way of living your life. So let's talk a little bit about that. Tactics is what you do. Strategy, why you do it. Okay. So the Bible says, wisdom is a principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. But with all you're getting, you didn't understand the Proverbs 4 and 6. If we just live by that principle, it would produce the strategies, it would produce the tactics that we use. And then we would be focused on getting the understanding. Once you get an understanding, you can do anything. All right. So that means that if a person understands what I don't, all I got to do is use a strategic way to learn and implement what it is they're doing. And then I can do exactly what they want. It's that simple. So it sounds simple, but do I have to have a business to have a trust? Is that the same thing, having a business and having a trust? As an individual, can I have a trust? Well, there are business trusts. So we, um, we've, um, we educate you on a plethora of them, but you don't have, a, have to have a business to have a trust. The best trust that we have is a ministry trust. And anybody can have one. Anybody can have that. Anybody that's a servant can have one. The only people we turn down are people who we know you ain't no servant because you don't have to have any charters, you don't have any, any state um, approval and all of these because our trust is unincorporated. So we keep the state out of our business, not in the business. Okay. For example, I'll give you one example why we don't do that. And, um, and this is for anybody. When I say minister, I'm talking about are you a servant? I'm talking about are you church people? Are you religious? That's not even what I'm talking about. I'm talking about are you a servant? Jesus said, let him that's best destined for you be your religious guy. Let him that's best amongst you be church. Let him that's best among you be sanctimonious. Let him that's best among you wear a turban. Let him that's best among you make sure they got a collar on. Let him that's best among you be able to say, God, God said, no, Jesus said, let him that's best among you, greatest among you, be a servant. All right. He said, if I if I hear the Lord and Savior, wash your feet, you ought also to wash one another's. In other words, we have one another's feet. If you have my feet, I teach you how to get rich. All right. And look, that was my very next question, because nobody wants to go it alone. So if we decide that, hey, we're going to go through your class, we're going to work with you, you're actually going to help us get the things that we need for this trust, correct? Correct. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, and how, and not not only that, but life is like I said, it's a walk. So you have to be trained after you get a trust how to facilitate. It means nothing to have a trust, you know. So our, our stuff is all year long. If a person joins our program, it's all year long. It's not no, it's not no, bam, bam, blam, blam, thank you, ma'am, bam, bam, one night nice stand and all that kind of stuff. Mm -mm. Uh, it ain't like that. It's, it's all. It's not all night long. It's all year long. All year long. It's all year long. I'm hearing you say something without you actually saying it. Even though we're going to walk together and work through this trust, you also got to be teachable because you know everybody doesn't quite get it. So you got to be be coachable. I guess is what I'm saying. You got to be coachable to work with Rick the World Coach. Is that right? Yeah. It sound like everybody wants to go to heaven, but nobody wants to die. If you're not sure that you're ready now, you should not tell a lie. Well, are you ready now to see my Savior's face? Have you got some straightening up to do before you leave this place? Everybody wants to go to heaven, but nobody wants to die. Look, everybody wants to go to heaven. 
but don't nobody want to die. But how are you going to get to heaven without dying? See, everything is on the other side of commitment. And I and we are very committed people, just the way we live. So to answer your question, Cherie, we only absolutely positively work with committed people. That's right. Not reluctant folk, not people who don't want to be taught, who don't want to be coached, who don't want, I got just got through telling you, I'm a puppy. So you ain't going to treat no puppy like no dog, right? You're going to have to listen because I'm a, I'm, I'm a coach because I'm coachable, you know? My, I got coaches, Myron Golden. I believe that's how we met. Because of the great Myron Golden, who's uh, my number one mentor. I'll be, I'll be um, in Tampa Bay tomorrow. You know, we'll be kicking with kicking it with them for a week in the beautiful sun, taking in some sun and some golf and having some fun, and learning from some of the some of the most um, um, amazing minds in the world. But I come from fifty dollars in a hotel room. That's what I come from. Homeless, fifty dollars in a hotel room. So, what's the difference between me and maybe the next person? Just the willingness to learn, the willingness to learn and look to see something. And let me say something about learning, Sheree. I know, I, to me, this is my definition of wisdom. To me, wisdom is the courage to do it in your head. So I don't know a lot of wise people. I know a lot of people that's got a bunch of stuff in their head, but they don't do it. So I don't know a lot of wise people. It just doesn't make to have something in your head that you don't do. That's about as unwise as you can possibly be. So that's what makes a person stuck up. That's what makes a person a snob. That's what makes a person superficial. That's what makes a person narcissistic. They got a lot of head now, but they can't bust a grape in a tractor. They can't put cheese on a walk. You know what I'm saying? Because they got this, they think of all that. I'm like, no, that in fact, you extremely slow because it's, it would be better if you didn't even know, because now you got to be accountable about all this that's in your head that you won't do. Uh, it's just like the woman that rolled up on Jesus, Sheree. She said, Jesus, bless it out of hats that you plucked from him. Breasts. Breasts is as if you can. What's out of breasts? That she sucked on. And the wound became out of her. I love Jesus. I love Jesus, boy. He's my favorite. I'm his biggest fan, I tell you. He said, now, nah, baby, he said, rather bless me who hear the word of God and do it. I, I, I dropped the mic, second check. I don't know what else to say. Watch out now. <laughs> hey, look, we thank you so much for your time. Is there anything else that you want to share with our subscribers um, that will add value? Um, and this is, is, is there any other contact information? We're going to get in touch with you um, if they want to work with you. Well, they, uh, just go just go to um, Instagram. That's the easiest way to catch up with me. But what I want to leave for the subscribers is this truth about child life. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all of our days. And when I think of this family, I can't help but give them praise. And Lord, you came into our lives. And you took away all of the strife. And surely, good and mercy shall follow me. And I would tell them this. It shall follow me. Follow me. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me. Listen, y'all. It shall follow you. It shall follow you. you. Surely goodness and mercy, surely goodness and mercy, Lord. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. Just you all just uh, go on. Let that be the truth in your life because that is the truth about who you are. That's my new single. And if anybody wants it, it's not out. Nobody can do that. But if anybody wants it because you all they have to do is send you a note that they want it and i will email it uh, directly or to email it to you if you if you so choose and your listeners can have it just so they can play it when they get up and say you know what that's what i'm speaking i'm speaking life into my life that's all i have that's all i that's my last um, um thing i have to say yeah. Well, Rick, thank you so much for being with us today and adding value to our subscribers. And the next time we have you on, we've got to practice our A and B selection. 
<laughs> I just can't let you keep still in the spotlight. We're gonna have to practice our A and B selection. So just get ready, okay? Just know <laughs> next time we're together, we're gonna get it together for, for the subscribe. Yeah. How about that? Yes, we will. Yes, we will. We'll, we'll make that happen. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, look. Till next time, guys. We'll see you on the Play Big Faster podcast. Thank you. God bless you, dear. Take care. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Play Big Faster podcast. Want more entrepreneurial content? I like this. Make sure to subscribe for future episodes. I already subscribed. I just clicked on it. Don't forget to like and leave a review. Share with a friend that needs this in their life. I think you need this more than I. Oh, and make sure to follow Cherie on IG at Cherie Speaks. And remember to play big faster.